only I had known back in the days, guys, if only I had known. You see, my first serious camera was a Canon DSLR, a uh, Canon Rebel, something like that, with a 1855 kit lens. And oh boy, we lived so many adventures together. We had so much fun, it was great. But there was something I didn't know. I was missing out on a huge opportunity to get better, faster, and take better photos. Now, all this, because of one simple reason. I just had to change one thing, but I didn't know at the time. So in a way, I'm making this video for myself when I was younger. Good morning everyone! Alright, guess what's in that bag? Because today's episode is super fun. I'm very excited to share that with you, especially with my younger self. All right, as you may know, whenever you take photos, when you're trying to take better photos, there are a few things that make a big difference in your work. Well, one of them is right here. As I mentioned, there is one thing that you can change with your camera that can make a huge difference. Some of you might be there already, some of you might not, but in any case, I think this little video is gonna be really fun. So we need two things for that. First of all, we need a camera, entry level, with a kit lens 18 to 55 f uh, 3.5 5.6 this used to be my wife's camera like i think she got it you know back in the days when you had the kit etc you were getting super excited under the christmas tree that's how i felt it was the best day of my life but nowadays i just wish i had that little guy at the same time when i got my gift so this is a 50 millimeter 1.8 and I want to show you the difference between shooting with the kit lens and shooting with that lens. And just so you know, this lens is really cheap. You don't need to buy an expensive prime lens. You just need a really, really cheap lens to, in my opinion, get way better results with your photo. And you will see, we're gonna go, we're gonna shoot a few photos. I have Trina with me. She's gonna be my model. We're gonna shoot with a 50 millimeter. We're gonna shoot with an 1855. And we're gonna see the difference. But let me tell you, yeah, I think it's pretty obvious that one of them is gonna win, but by how much? Let's check together. All right, it's gonna be super simple. I'm gonna take a, a few portraits of Trina with that 16 or uh, 1855 and then with the 50 millimeter 1.8. I'm gonna shoot at the lowest aperture possible. So I think it's gonna be 5.6 on that and 1.8 on that. I wanna show you the difference. Let's get started. Trina, ready? All right, first shot. Cool, I've got a few photos of Trina. Uh, just quick and easy. Now we're gonna change lens. We're gonna go and put the 50 millimeter on it. Let's go, let's get started. Trina, how are you feeling? I'm okay. I'm freezing. 50 millimeter, 1.8, second take. We've got a few shots that I took with a 50 millimeter and then with the 1855. Let's go in a warm place because look, my hands are like kind of blue, red and barely move to review those photos and talk about the biggest advantage about it. Damn, that was a fun shoot. I love going back to those old cameras. Just shows me how much sometimes we rely on the good gear to take photos easily. Now, those two lenses are still being made nowadays, although that's 12 years old, that camera, those two are still being made. And I think that's why that video is so important. That's why I want my former self to see it. That's why I want everyone to see it. Side note, you saw some of the pictures. I edited quickly those photos and I did very slight adjustments, just for example, cropping. That's all I did to those images. I didn't want to do more just to show you a very realistic result. And for those of you who have been asking, yes, there is finally a sale on the presets. You can grab 40% off my presets if you want them, simply because we reached 60,000 the other day and I'm still absolutely amazed by it. So I wanted to take that opportunity also to thank you. I did a huge thank you on Instagram, but thank you so, so much for each and every one of you for being part of that journey. It means the world to me. You have no clue 
um, how much I'm humbled and grateful having you. I receive a lot of your messages like how some of the videos really help you and how you get more ideas to shoot out etc. Well just know that it's reciprocal. Reciprocal? Just know that it goes both way. You guys inspire me to create more and also I'm so excited about the next adventures. Whew. I'm gonna share that with you. I'm gonna take you on the terrain. I'm gonna try to do a little bit made on the field. It's gonna be fun. All right, so why is that lens so much better than that one? All right, let's talk about the kit lens first. As you might have seen, what is great is that you can zoom in and out, meaning you have a wider frame or you can shoot tighter. You can go all the way to 55, which is like 76 millimeter equivalent on a full frame. Now here's a problem with those lenses and why I hate those. It's simply because it ha doesn't have a constant aperture, which means when you have 50 millimeter on that lens, you're shooting at f 5.6 which adds so much depth of field on your images and when you want to take photos when you want to isolate your subject that is not cool that is great if you just want to stop stuff with like a high aperture and that's it it's not even that sharp in my opinion now those guys the 50 millimeter 1.8 35 millimeter 1.4 those prime lenses are amazing you can go with a very low aperture you can really isolate your subject from the background just look at the difference between that 50 millimeter at 1.8 and the 50 millimeter here at three at 5.6 difference is massive and if you want my opinion i much prefer the 50 millimeter versus that one after it could be personal taste but i really love shadow depth of feel especially when i work with subject with people on top of that shooting with a prime lens is going to get you moving you're going to have to move around you have to get closer or further depending on how you want your frame to look like oops <laughs> that's a, that's a mistake number one i think i ever so made. you want to move around with that lens because you're going to have to recompose properly your shots now the difference is that with those guys you get kind of lazy you know you don't move enough and that's what we talked about on the podcast with Beatrice and Jeremy the other day we talked about it and we said that prime lenses really make you a better photographer especially at the beginning because it will force you to always compose your shots properly by moving and understanding your frame better you cannot just play with the zoom to make it work last last huge advantage especially if you don't have a billion dollar camera guys 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 listen up if you're not oh god if you're not if you're using that lens or f3556 f4 whatever lens and you don't have a f1.8 or 1.4 you have to crank up your ISO very high when you're shooting in low light. When you're at 1.8, you're gonna get a lot more light into your camera. You can lower the ISO for the same shot I had to get at ISO 800 on that lens, whereas I was at ISO 200 on that one. It is a massive difference if you want my opinion. It is also a big reason why your photos might not look sharp, might not look crisp, it might look a little bit muddy. It's simply because you're going in the range where your sensor is gonna be very noisy. So avoid that. Get one one of those cheap lands you can get that for hundred dollar forty dollars thirty dollars second hand i mean it's crazy i don't understand why they don't give that to you with your camera it's almost as if manufacturers didn't want you to take good pictures it's it's so strange all right when i started just quick story when i started i remember I never understood why my shots were all busy, there was too much information, etc. in my photos. And the day I tried a 50 minute 1.8, for example, or uh, really shooting at, at a very low aperture, wow, it changed my world. I was like, oh, that's how they do it. It's not that complex. No, it's not that complex. That's how they do it. Uh, but I was always chasing zoom lenses and I was like 70, 300, whoa, 600. That was great, but it wasn't doing the job I wanted. <laughs> all right, guys, so to recap, shallow depth of field, lower ISO, gradient low light, amazing bokeh at night and in the daytime, get your subject to stand out, gets you to move and understand composition better. Yeah, just get rid of it. No, I'm kidding. Wide range of uh, focal length, great when it's full daytime, very light. <laughs> that's, that's, that's all that yeah that, that's all i have for you guys all right with that being said let me know in the comments what lens are you using are you a prime lens guy are you a zoom lens guy are you 
do you still have those or not or did I just make that video for my past self and everyone is already aware of it nowadays I don't know let me know in the comments I'm super curious and also I really want to invite you to watch the next video so if you're not subscribed please join the awesome adventures become part of the club make sure you hit that SUBS every button ring that notification bell it's gonna make an amazing noise and and Get out there, go shoot, try something different, try something new. I will see you in the next episode. See you guys, bye. Oh, <laughs> before I break another lens, um, side note, very, very humble uh, by all of you being here. I just wanted to add it again, uh, that's all. It's it's just it's just kind of crazy to, to think all of you are, are just watching and um, yeah, that you're enjoying. I get some messages from you, it's just really cool. Keep it real guys, keep it real.